Okay. All right, October 2010 CSR for the plaintiff, Ms. Potter. We have a depo, so in the court seat, defense, Mr. Fisher, regular defense, Mr. Baker, 200 words per minute. That's eights to you and me. Take it away, Ms. Potter. Okay, ready? Begin. The record should reflect that we are here today to take the deposition of Karen Wilson. Let's state appearances, please. Thank you, Stephen Baker, for the defendant, Ron Johnson. My client is not present. Dan Fisher, for the defendant, Target. Thank you, and I am Susan Potter for the plaintiff, Margaret Robin Peterson. The record should reflect my client is present today. Is there something that you want to put on the record before we get started with the witness? Yes, ma'am, thank you. I just would like to stick with all counsel that the witness has been given an instruction sheet of some kind which states the rules that we are to all abide by for the purposes of today's depo. Yes, it is an advisement that I always provide to witnesses who come to my office for deposition. I will stipulate that Ms. Wilson has been provided with that. That's fine. It is just a preamble that lets the witness know what to expect and what the procedures are. Yes, I agree. Okay, uh, reset on eight. Ms. Wilson, do you have any questions before we begin? I don't believe so. Thank you. Well, let's get started. The witness has been sworn. Ms. Wilson, my name is Stephen Baker. I represent Mr. Ron Johnson, a defendant named in this lawsuit. On August 15, 2009, were you shopping at the Target store near your residence? Yes, I was. Do you remember what day of the week that was by any chance? No, not really. I have a calendar in my handbag that I could check. No, that's all right. We just want your best memory today. Okay. Let me begin by asking you, Ms. Wilson, are you currently employed at the present time? Absolutely. And were you employed back in August of 2009? Yes, I was. Where are you employed, ma'am? Currently, I volunteer at the preschool at my church. Okay, is that where you were employed last year as well? No, last year I was working out of my home. I only started at the preschool this summer. All right, what exactly do you do at the preschool? I am a classroom helper. Basically, I am there to help the teacher with the students and to assist in any way possible. Okay, is this a paid position you have now? Yes, sir. My grandchildren also attend that preschool. Ms. Wilson, you testified last year you were employed out of your residence for some period of time. What exactly were you doing for employment? I used to watch some neighborhood children out of my home. The children I was caring for moved away earlier this year. Uh, these weren't your grandchildren then? Uh, no, they were some neighborhood children. Their parents are close friends of ours. I would watch them in the morning, take them to school, and then pick them up in the afternoons. Their parents worked, so I was helping. I see. Now back to August of 2009, on the day that you were shopping at Target, do you actually remember that particular day, August 15? Yes, I do. I remember it very well. What time of day did you go to Target? I believe it was about 9 o'clock in the morning. Were you shopping for anything in particular? I was shopping for a birthday gift for a friend of mine. I also needed to pick up some household supplies, cleaning supplies. Now, thinking back, do you happen to remember which part of the store you started your shopping in or where you first went upon entering? Well, I usually just go straight when I enter the store and begin making my rounds. Is that true even if you have a list with specific items that you are shopping for? Yes, that's correct. It is just habit. During your shopping trip, when did you initially observe the plaintiff that day? I came around the corner and I saw her laying on the ground. Did you notice whether she was alone on the ground? I didn't notice anyone else laying on the ground. There were plenty of people around her, but she was the only one laying on the ground. Please describe what you observed when you came around the corner. I heard some crying and that's what got my attention at first. Did you overhear the crying before you saw someone laying down? Absolutely. I heard the crying. It got louder. Sounded like someone was getting upset. What happened then? As I rounded the corner, the woman was laying on the ground. There was an employee trying to help her get up. How many people were around the woman when you arrived? Ten people. How many were employees versus shoppers? I think it was half and half. Did you observe any major equipment in the area surrounding where everyone was gathered around? There was a large, very large basket they have to stock the store. It is similar to a pallet that they put merchandise on and wheel it out to set up the displays. Anything else? It was also a floor sweeper. I don't know if it was a vacuum or a buffer. It is the kind of machine that has the handlebars and you can use it for cleaning the carpet. 
Am I correct that you didn't see how the woman got on the ground? Yes, that's correct. I have nothing further at this time. Very well. Mr. Fisher, please proceed with your questions at this time. Ms. Wilson, I have several questions for you regarding this incident. All right. Just to remind you, my name is Dan Fisher, and I represent Target. Yes, I remember. Can you estimate how long you had been in the store before you heard the crying that you told us about? I would say probably about 15 minutes. Do you remember what department you were in when you heard the crying? I was making my way to the back of the store where the supplies are. I was walking through the women's clothing department. All right. Were you pushing a basket at the time? Yes, I always get a basket when I go shopping. Okay. You testify you had been shopping for about 15 minutes prior to hearing the crying? That's correct. Had you selected any items and put them in your cart? I picked out a couple things for the present I was buying. Do you remember what specifically was in your cart that morning? Is that really relevant, what was in her basket? I want to know if she had anything that would potentially block her line of sight. Just ask her that question then. It's not really relevant what she had in her basket. Miss Wilson, was there anything in your cart that was blocking your vision as you were shopping? No, I only had a couple items in my basket when the crying started. Okay, you mentioned that you were shopping for supplies. What kind of items are you talking about? Just paper towels and cleaning supplies you need around the house. I was walking to that department of the store when I heard the crying. Now, had you previously shopped in that Target on any prior occasions? Yes. Do you know if you had ever seen this woman in that Target before that morning? Kind of looks familiar sitting here today, but I don't believe so. Okay. It wasn't a situation where you were seeing someone that you knew laying on the ground? No. I mean, when you hear someone crying and you see a woman on the ground, you just want to help her. But you didn't recognize her that morning. Is that correct? I object. The witness has already answered that question. All right. It wasn't a situation where she was a friend of yours. Is that correct? No, I didn't know her name until I got the subpoena to appear here for the deposition. Very well. Now you have testified you didn't personally see how she ended up on the ground that morning. Is that correct? That's right. Did you have any contact with the woman on the ground? By that question, I mean, did you speak to her? Not initially. The gentleman who was trying to get her up was talking to her, and he was calling for medical help. I was only waiting to see if she needed anything. At that time, did you notice any other shoppers in the area? Certainly, there were a few. Did you notice any other shoppers who were speaking to the woman on the ground? There was a gentleman who was asking if she wanted to use his cell phone to call anybody. Did you overhear that conversation? He offered his phone for her to make a call. Miss Wilson, how long did you remain in the area that morning? I was there the entire time. I didn't want to leave until I knew she was all right. Were you present when the paramedics arrived? Yes, sir. Do you remember if the man with the radio was still present? Yes, I believe he was the one who called for help. When the paramedics arrived, do you remember how many people were in the area? There were people walking by the whole time we were there. I'm asking about the immediate area where the woman was on the ground with the paramedics. How many people were surrounding her at that time? When help arrived, there were two employees. The employees who were there, had they remained there the entire time you were present? Definitely. It was the employee with the radio and another man. Do you know the names of either of those gentlemen? I didn't know their names then, but I know who they are now. Who are they? The gentleman with the radio was the manager. His name is David. The other employee was Ron Johnson. Do you know Mr. Johnson to be an employee of Target? That's what I have been told. I object hearsay. It is noted for the record. Thank you. Did you know Mr. Johnson before that day? No, I did not. Did you know personally he was an employee that day? Definitely looked like an employee to me. Is that because he had on a uniform that would perhaps identify him? Yes, and he was working in the area. Did you observe him to be working in the area before you saw the woman on the ground? He wasn't working when I first saw him. No further questions right now. Ms. Wilson, as you know, I represent Margaret Peterson, the woman who fell in the store that morning. I understand. On the day you felt, pardon me, strike that. On the morning you witnessed my client on the ground, had you had any conversation with anyone in the store? You mean before I saw her? Correct. No, I may have said good morning to somebody, but no conversation. All right. I believe you previously testified you had not had any personal contact with my client before you discovered her on the ground. Is that correct? That's correct. 
were you present when my client was lifted from the ground to a chair? Yes, I was. I stayed there the entire time. In fact, we left the store together. Are you speaking of my client? Yes. After she was finished with the medical people, I walked her out to her car to make sure she was physically able to drive home. Now, when my client was being treated at the store, did you observe whether or not she was administered any medication? I didn't see that happen. What did you observe in that regard? I saw them check her blood pressure and things like that, but they didn't give her a shot or a pill or anything. Okay. Did you overhear any conversation that was had between Margaret Peterson and the people treating her? That would be hearsay objection. Join in the objection. You may answer the question, Ms. Wilson. I heard them asking her questions about how she was feeling, what had happened. I really didn't hear her responses because she speaks so softly. And did you observe whether or not they put any kind of brace or medical device on the body of my client? I believe they were giving her a sling for her arm, but she said she didn't want it. Do you know if my client went to the hospital that morning? They wanted to transport her to the hospital, but she didn't want to go. I am just asking what you observed. You can't testify to what you think, just what you personally observed yourself. Do you know if my client went to the hospital that morning? No, I don't believe so. We exited out to the parking lot together. I saw Margaret get into her car. What she did after that, I wouldn't have any idea. Let me ask you a few questions about that. You testified that you exited out of the store together. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You also mentioned that you were just beginning your shopping when you saw my client fall. Objection. Ms. States is the testimony. Join in the objection. Ms. Wilson, let me rephrase my question to you. You testified that you had only been in the store for about 15 minutes before you heard the crying and observed my client on the ground. Is that correct? That's correct. And I believe you also testified that you only had a few things in your basket at the time. Is that correct? That's right. Is it fair for us to assume that you didn't complete your shopping during that morning before you left Target? No, I finished my shopping and then I left. You testified previously you exited out to the parking lot with Margaret Peterson. Is that correct? That's correct. So explain to us how that happened. Did my client wait for you to finish your shopping and then you exited together? Objection leading. What happened was that when she got up and was ready to leave, I asked her if she wanted some assistance out to her car. She said she would be okay. I asked her to kindly wait for me so I could help her outside. Okay, did she wait for you somewhere in Target? Absolutely. We immediately walked over to where the snack bar is. There are tables and chairs over there. I bought her a cup of coffee and she sat there and relaxed for a little bit. Did you remain there with her? What transferred at, transpired after the coffee? I left her there. I went and picked up a few more things that I needed and then checked out. After I had paid for my items, then I met her back over at the table and chairs. Was she in the same position she was in when you originally left her there? You mean sitting at the same table? Was she seated at the same table where you had left her drinking coffee? Correct. We walked over there. I asked her not to go anywhere and to wait for me. She promised she would wait for me. She patiently waited. Okay, after you made your purchases, did you immediately leave the store? Tell us what happened. When I met her back over by the snack bar, I sat down and we chatted for a little bit. She was still drinking her coffee, so we just remained there drinking coffee and relaxing. Did you have any conversation with Margaret at that time? Well, of course. I asked how she was feeling and if she needed anything to eat. Without telling us what she said to you, describe to us exactly what happened. I'm not sure I understand. Did you have any discussion with my client regarding what had transpired that morning in Target? Certainly. She told me what happened. All right. Without telling us what her words were, did she relay to you what it was that caused her to be on the ground when you first saw her? Yes, she did. Did she express to you what she believed happened prior to her fall? Yes, she did. Approximately how long did you remain in the Target food court? I would estimate we were only there probably another 20 minutes. I ended up getting myself a cup of coffee and we just remained seated and chatted for a bit. Would it be accurate to say that you and Margaret Peterson are approximately the same age? Yes, ma'am. We talked about our grandchildren and all the things we have in common. Hi, Kristen. You can, um, you know what, it's uh, it's great to see you, by the way. That's okay, yeah. <laughs> We're still recording, Carrie. Oh. That's all right. It's okay. That's okay. 
All right.